I would say that, and I've written, a, I've, I've come up with a term, a mm-hmm. word term, using words again, mm-hmm. to handle situations like we have right now. And I call it Victim's Guaranteed Qualification. In other words, BGQ. That's how I remember it. Mm-hmm. Victim's Guaranteed, and it's listed in my word guide. Victim's Guaranteed Qualification. And what is that guaranteed qualification? Because I've had these type of discussions, and I've been involved in them, and I've observed them down through the years. And black people sometimes, many times, we mm-hmm. get we get we start confusing ourselves and each other, and we get combative sometimes over the use of words, you know, like the term Black Lives Matter. Sometimes that can start a big argument, and all that really comes out of it is a big argument between black people about whether or not they should use the word, you know, and white lives matter, and whether or not all lives matter. And then people start arguing about that, and they're just words. So... I came up with a term called Victim's Guaranteed Qualification, which means anybody who wants to use any term to describe whatever his or her situation is, if that person is black, a victim of white supremacy, Mm -hmm. all right, he or she has not only the privilege but the duty to say whatever he or she wants to say. That's why I'm saying right now about this particular word, so that we don't get, you know, all caught up in it and use three or four hours going back and forth. Use the terms that you think will work best for you. That's it. That keeps black people from getting into these endless arguments that go on and on and on and on in every beauty parlor, in every barbershop, at every meeting and whatnot, going around in a big circle, sometimes just about what words we're going to use. So you give everybody as an individual. You you don't really give it to them. They have it anyway. Use whatever terms you think will work. But what you say the whole purpose for doing for using words is to to get a job done. So if the if you say saying that the system of white su- white supremacy should be changed to a system of white inferiority and and call that system a system of inferiority and that works for you and it works for others, then by all means use it. You don't have to get permission from Neely Full or anybody else. This is what I do when I write a book. I don't get anybody's permission. Indirectly, I get permission from the white supremacists. Otherwise, they would just squash my book. They would just say, we're going to squash your book and you too, because I say that they are supreme, okay? The white supremacists are supreme, which is why I wrote a book about our problem with white supremacy. But if somebody else wants to call it by a different name and say, uh, there are some black people who say there's no such thing as white supremacy, that there's no such thing as racism, that it doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. And I don't get into an argument with people about that. I simply say, oh, what if you come to the conclusion that racism doesn't exist and that your book is just a whole bunch of nonsense, and there's a lot of people who have said that about my book. Say, you're writing about racism. Racism don't even exist, man. That's just in your mind. If you get that out of your mind, you can go on about your business and do what you got to do. Talking about some racism. Ain't nobody telling you what to do. Ain't nobody making you do nothing. You do what you want to do. If you're a real man, I've had people say that to me. And my response has been, I'm not going to argue with you. If you believe that, go with it all the way and see where it will take you.